and good morning everyone and welcome to this short service of Midweek Holy Communion on Thursday, March the 18th. I hope that you are all doing well and uh, are having a good Lent. Uh, we're progressing through Lent now quite quickly, aren't we? And we're only two and a half weeks, or just over two weeks really, away from Easter now. So I hope that everything is going well for you. So let's begin our short service, shall we? We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. A time of confession of sin. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father, but we have turned aside from your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is a light on our path but we have walked in the darkness of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life, but we have not listened to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the collect for today. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 5 verses 31 to 47. John 5, 31 to 47. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another, and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father, your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, Jesus is really not very popular with these scribes and Pharisees and religious leaders, is he? You may remember if you were watching the Midweek Communion from this time last week, 
we had a reading about the Pharisees accusing Jesus of casting out demons by the prince of demons, Beelzebul. And they had all kinds of problems with him over that. And now they've got more problems. What has happened here earlier in chapter 5 is that Jesus has healed a man, but he's healed him on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath day, which is that holy day of rest. And on the Sabbath day in Jewish law, you could do no work. And healing someone was classified as work. So the Pharisees and the religious leaders were really angry and offended by Jesus because he'd broken the Jewish law in their, in their eyes. He had healed someone on the Sabbath. And they were saying to each other and to him, if this man was the Messiah, if this man was the son of God, if, he's, if he was sent by God as he says he is, then he wouldn't be breaking the Jewish law. He wouldn't be doing it. And Jesus argues with them and says, well, actually, uh, you put all your faith in the law. But if you read the law, if you read the Old Testament, if you search the scriptures, and, and their scriptures, of course, in those days were just the Old Testament, you will see that they all testify to me and the things that I am doing. And they kept on finding throughout Jesus' ministry all kinds of things with which to trap him and oppose him and just simply refuse to believe he said who he was. But Jesus just carries on doing his work, doing the work that the Father has sent him, healing people, teaching, and so on. And you know, today, things aren't that much different, are they? Because people out there in the world, all sorts of different people, will find all kinds of different reasons for not believing in Jesus. All kinds of reasons for saying that God does not exist and that Jesus was just a good man and nothing more. And they will find all kinds of excuses for not giving their lives over to him. They want evidence. They want proof. They want signs. They want this. They want that. They want the other. And some of those requests are quite genuine. But sometimes you feel that they're making just all kinds of excuses to avoid coming to that conclusion that God is God and Jesus is who he says he is. And really, they need to believe in him. But we need to do just what Jesus did. We need to carry on being the people we are and doing all we can to pray and to hope that people will come to faith in Christ. And there are so many things we can do, aren't there? We can speak words uh, of faith to them. We can, uh, our words that we say may well be instrumental in bringing people to faith in Christ. We hope that's the case. We pray that's the case. We need to live lives that, that are worthy of our calling. We need to be able to draw people to Christ by the things that we do as well as by the things that we say. We just need to, peep, to be the people who we are, children of God, living our Christian lives as best we can with the help of the Holy Spirit. We can do those things and we can pray that those things will have some effect. But there will always be people who ignore us, who ridicule us, who reject us, may even persecute us. But we need to do what Jesus did, just carry on doing the work of God speaking and doing and being who we are and as well as those who reject and ridicule us there will be an equal number who may be quiet but who in the background are listening to us watching us taking it all in thinking reflecting and who knows we may be the people who will gradually steadily lead those people to personal faith in Jesus Christ so be encouraged it may, may, may seem that in the world today we're in a very small minority and everything's always against us. Uh, but who knows, through our faithful witness, how many people may eventually come to know Jesus Christ for themselves. So be encouraged. So shall we now come to our prayers? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we do pray for all those we meet in our daily lives who do not have faith in you. Members of our family, maybe, our neighbours, our friends, our work colleagues and others. And we pray that the words that we speak, the lives that we live, the people that we are, will be instrumental in pointing them towards faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to pray this morning for all the effects of the ongoing global pandemic. We continue to pray for our NHS and all who work in it, for all those involved in the rollout of the vaccination programme. 
and for people affected in other ways. People who are affected economically and uh, are in danger of losing their livelihoods or may already have done so. For people who are affected socially and mentally and may be struggling with their mental health. We pray about the international response to the, to the vaccination programme and that the vaccine will be distributed fairly <clears throat> throughout all countries in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also continue to pray for the family and friends of Sarah Everard and we pray about the current um, debate about violence against women and girls and the way that they feel uh, in danger as they walk the streets. And we pray for uh, the governments and all, all agencies and for ourselves that we may do all we can to ensure safety for women. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for other parts of the world today, for the situation in Myanmar, for the unrest there and for those that are attempting to find a solution to that, for all those who are imprisoned for their faith or for their political beliefs and for all who have been imprisoned unjustly for no reason at all. And we continue to pray for them and particularly we name this morning Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe in Iran. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those we know in any kind of need this morning, for those who are ill, for those who have been recently bereaved, for those who are lonely and housebound, for those who are anxious and fearful. And we also thank God this morning for the many gifts that have been given to us. And we wouldn't be slow to give thanks for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the point in our service where we share the peace virtually. So we'll do that again now. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and share the peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of virtual peace. If you want to type a message on the screen, then feel free to do so. So now we come to the Eucharistic prayer. And you'd like to join in with the words and the responses if you know them. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, 
he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of, our crea of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with St Lawrence and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. So now, as usual, I will take the bread and the wine on behalf of all of us. And we pray that at some point in the not too distant future, we'll be able to do this together again in church. And we say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So that brings us very nearly to the end of our service, apart from the final prayer and the blessing. So can I say thank you very much for joining me this morning for this short service of Holy Communion. Hopefully you found it helpful and it will sustain you today and in the days to come. Remember that uh, our, our service uh, this Sunday will be, will be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube at 10.30 as usual from the church. And in the meantime, I hope you have a good day and that you continue your journey through Lent and look forward to celebrating the resurrection at Easter in just over a couple of weeks' time. 
So, the final prayer and blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.